Hi, I'm Daniel Riconti, and I'm here with my colleague, Kyle Paxson. We're part of the real estate team at James Moore & Company. Real estate is always a popular investment because of the vast amount of tax benefits it offers, but there's a variety of real estate investments. Today, we're going to talk about one of those, real estate fund. Kyle, what is a real estate fund? Let's dive into it, my friend. Uh, real estate funds are generally uh, pools uh, of funds that are focused exclusively on investing in income uh, generating property. Uh, it's generally spearheaded by a sponsor or fund manager who has years of experience in the real estate industry. This person's ultimately going to be responsible for analyzing the opportunities uh, and then actually executing on real estate opportunities using capital raised from this fund. Uh, these funds can be structured in a lot of different way ways. Some of the funds uh, are open to the masses, whereas others are more closed off, maybe just to accredited investors. Um, or things of that nature, and uh, they can focus on different uh, specific geographies, different type classes we'll get into a little bit more later. Um, but most real estate investment funds we're talking about here are closed end funds uh, that target specific um, risk adjusted passive returns uh, for the investors in this pool. Uh, before we dive into it too deep, I do want to draw a distinction. We're not talking about REITs today, which are corporations that uh, invest directly in commercial real estate. Uh, these funds are generally structured as partnerships from a tax perspective, um, and the investors in these are buying classes of interest. Um, the income and losses uh, from these funds are taxed at the individual level and flow through with the Form K-1. Uh, and so you can take advantage of the different uh, real estate benefits, which Daniel will touch on here in a minute, uh, at the individual le level with the rest of your tax picture. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to deep dive a little bit more into real estate funds, uh, and today we're going to focus specifically on the benefits and the risks that we often see with these types of funds. Uh, Daniel's going to kick us off with the benefits. Thanks, Kyle. That's a good clarity that talk the difference between actual REITs and real estate funds that we're talking about more like private equity. There is a lot of benefits into doing a real estate fund. So one of the probably the most biggest benefit that we're, most people buy is basically it just provides better buying options through crowdsourcing. It's a real estate fund, so it's a lot of people putting their money together. And so when you have more capital, you're able to just have more opportunities of what to purchase. So instead of purchasing a single rental property, now this fund can go out and purchase an entire portfolio of rental properties. Or maybe you want to invest in something much larger, like apartment complexes. Or the fund can break into commercial real estate, invest in storage facilities, strip malls, office space, industrial warehouses, hotels, et cetera. It, once you break into commercial real estate, it's just a long list of what you can actually get into. And why is that important? And it's because of the basically the performance, the rate of return. Commercial real estate over the last 20 years has significantly outperformed the S&P 500. So when people are looking at, should I invest into the stock market or should I get into real estate? A lot of times you're looking at the rate of return. And when you notice that something significantly outperforms something, you're thinking, well, my money's not lagging the most out of my money here. Besides just having a better rate of return than the stock market, there's different levels of kind of returns and on your investment here. When you invest in real estate funds, you get annual cash flow. So an annual distribution or something like that from just the day-to-day -day annual income that it brings in. But then at the end of the life, when you sell the property, you're gonna get a large distribution of waterfall from the, from the gain from the sell. So you basically have almost like two separate rates of returns here and with a huge amount coming at the end. And then when you invest into a real estate fund, you still get all those same tax advantages that a normal real estate does. Very common for someone to buy a large property, do a cost seg, get that waterfall depreciation right there in year one, which hopefully based on your situation, you might be able to take those losses on your tax return. Investing in real estate, um, a fund can actually be a very diversified for your portfolio. So obviously you're going from, I, I can invest in stocks, now I get real estate, get that diversified. You can actually get diversified within real estate. Real estate is very geographical every geographical region performs differently based on just the region. And so by investing in a fund, now you have the capital to be able to invest in maybe several regions, or you're looking for a specific region to get that kind of performance. Coastal regions like Florida usually have high appreciation, a low cap rate, but the Midwest might have lower appreciation, 
but have a much higher cap rate. So having yourself in different exposures and different markets like that usually is better for your entire portfolio. A real estate fund also gives you more access to be able to purchase into residential and commercial. We've already talked about how they can perform differently and also different exposures about how the economy is working right now. And you can just go through across several different kinds of real estate. We've talked before about if you're in commercial, well, you can have hotels, but you could also have office space. So some people, you know, maybe commercial didn't do really as well because of the pandemic, things like that. Well, it's like, well, I'm exposed to several different asset classes. When that exposure comes up, I'm safe because my portfolio is diversified. Having a, a, a more access again to capital and crowdsourcing gives you just opportunities to buy a lot of things you might not be able to buy. So if you can find a, a huge property that just needs a lot of value, uh, added value added properties, so I'd say like renovations, like large amount of renovations. Well, you'd be able to buy that, add that value, and then you can have significant appreciation, significant rate of return because of that. And last thing it diversifies here is just you get access to, like I said, all the normal tax breaks, but some of them are a little bit more difficult for the individual to do. But when you do a real estate fund, now you have, tax breaks like opportunity zones and historical tax credits that might have been difficult for you as the individual but the fund can now get into those those tax breaks and then you as the individual can still get access to that there's kind of two parts to every real estate fund there's the general partner or the gp and then there's the limited partner the lp okay the general partner is the manager of the fund. It's the one that puts the fund together, raises the capital, and then it administers the day-to-day -day operations. The GP usually receives some kind of management fund or, or it's managing of the fund. And then there's usually performance compensation. This is how they kind of make more money than everyone else. And there's favorable tax treatment. So for carried interest, you have received uh, a better tax rate. This is just compensation, like I said, that the manager receives usually based on the performance of the fund. The limited partner or the LP is usually is more of a passive investor. Okay, when you're passive like this, that means you're also limited to your liability. Well, your risk is really only limited to how much you invest. So, if I invest a hundred thousand dollars into the fund, the worst thing that could happen is is I lose a hundred thousand dollars. I don't have anything else that I can lose outside of what I invest in the fund. But by being passive, you're basically, you're just sitting back and you're receiving your checks, your distributions, which is really nice. This is a great opportunity for non-real estate professionals to get into real estate, get those great returns, get that exposure without having the experience and having to do the day-to-day -day activities. But just like any other kind of investment, while there's great benefits, there's also potentially great risk. Kyle, what are the risks? of investing in a real estate fund let's get into it i have to be the bearer of bad news here with the risk right someone's got to do it so i'll take i'll take it on um so i want to look at risk uh D daniel just talked us through the difference between the general partner and the limited partner in these structures right and again a uh, general partner generally that fund manager um and i'm going to start with that the fund manager perspective um so the general partner in these is the one who's setting it up uh doing the day-to-day -day, uh, operations getting that one uh, waterfall at the end uh, but ultimately as Daniel touched on, the limited partners have limited liability. In a lot of cases, um, the general partner is actually uh, taking that liability on. So there definitely can be based on whether uh, the debt securing the real estate you're investing in has personal guarantees or uh, the GP has other collateral at stake. Um, the, the GP's losses can potentially extend beyond what was invested in the fund. Uh, and that's to protect the limited, the, uh, limited partners. Um, certainly the GP and the day-to-day -day operations, um, their reputation is at stake here, right? If I talk Daniel into contributing a million dollars into my fund, Daniel's going to trust that I do a good job with that million dollars. And if I, uh, if I uh, make a bad investment and I can't get Daniel his money back with his nice returns that he's looking forward to, um, that puts my reputation at stake. What we see with a lot of these funds with the current tax environment and real estate is that you start with one of these funds, you make some money, you go and sell a property. All of a sudden this can snowball into two, three, four, five. You can have 10 funds with the same pool of investors. You've now got investors, both the GP and the LP have kind of the, the counterpart that they're comfortable with now. They've got the process down. They have good expectations on 
uh, deliveries get actually getting paid on their monthly returns, you know, all that good stuff. And so um, doing this correctly, especially on the front end setup can really snowball this into bigger and bigger operations if, if that's where you're headed. Of course, if you tank your first investment as a GP, I'm probably not going to be able to convince Daniel to give me another million dollars. So that that's that's a big uh, risk we face here. Um, from the actual like management side, right? Um, I want to touch on both kind of the tenant issues and vacancy risks. Um, so for tenants, uh, looking at the commercial side, uh, these generally have longer leases. Um, and so with that, you need high quality tenants. If you have a uh, less uh, lessee who's tied into a longer lease and they're a low quality tenant and they are trashing your commercial property, um, you're gonna have a much harder time selling at the end or it's gonna be a lot more costly to do so. Um, the benefit to that is with you know one longer, longer term lease, with, if you have a high quality tenant, the commercial properties tend to be lower maintenance, right? Um, and then on the multifamily side, uh, you have the, the risk is that you have a higher volume of tenants to manage and there is a lot of annual maintenance and turnover. Um, you can't find that one A plus tenant or it's harder to find the A plus tenant that's going to carry you for several, several years, right? And hands off management. These are turning over all the time, especially if you're, I'm located in Gainesville, I'm the college town, the multifamily properties here are turning over every single year, right? Um, and so uh, that that certainly adds more of that management piece. And there's, of course, more inherent risk and in that more active day to day management. Um, kind of with that comes what happens if you have vacancies Again, in my college town, multifamily, not really an issue for us right now because you have a new batch of students every year. They come in and fill in the spots and everything's uh, everything's great. Right. Um, but on the commercial side, you know, uh, generally, if we're kind of looking at the strip mall uh, 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 commercial real estate those are generally anchored by a big box retailer you know something of the sort that draws people into your strip mall if you lose that grocery store or the uh big department store that's getting people into your into your uh into your plaza uh your other tenants are going to have issues and then all of a sudden um your your whole investment is losing losing a lot of value there um you know, a lot of times just incentivizing these big box, box retailers and things like that uh, may require a lot of upfront costs to improve the property if you if you um, buy in and it is need a lot of repair um, and also incentivize uh, new tenants to support the anchor. Those are the big ticket items from the GP side, right? So that day to day active management. Then I want to look at this more and there's some overlap here, but I want to focus on the LP side when I'm talking about this. Um, sort of different classes of risk when looking into how how and what which one of these funds should I invest? What are the risks in doing so? Um, from the LP side, I want to look at first and foremost, when I'm looking at a real estate fund, I'm looking at who the operator is, right? Daniel, I have a great relationship with Daniel. He's a wonderful coworker of mine. I trust him. I know he's going to do well with my money. So we're looking at the who here, right? Who are you more than just the real estate property? Who are you investing in? Um, if if the who has a weakness, if Daniel has weaknesses, does he have a team around him to support those weaknesses and, and uh, bolster his resume a little bit uh, so that I can get comfortable with my million dollars? And then tying into that, I want to look at Daniel's strategy too. I, I need a, I need a good sales pitch on uh, on what what our long term vision here is, uh, and I, I need some comfort that that what I'm investing in makes sense and that you have a good well baked plan uh, with with my with my million dollars. Um, certainly, keep talking about my million dollars. You have the financial risk, right? I'm gonna take my uh, the terms of my investments to my attorneys, and I'm making sure that I'm comfortable with everything um, in terms of my classification as an LP and the operating agreement, how I'm getting paid, when I'm getting paid, all that good stuff. And again, getting back to strategy and timeline, and just making sure I'm comfortable with all those metrics. Um, market and location. Again, this ties in, of course, with a GP who's choosing the market and location for these investments. But I really want to look for the market of, my, of the real estate that's being held in these funds. What area is this investment held in? Is the area growing? Is there opportunity for growth? You know, is it um, is it an area that I'm interested in in, in investing my money in? Um, gets back to Daniel's comments on diversification. You know, if if these uh, if I choose the wrong market, that can significantly hinder my return. Um, and then with location risk, looking at the market is more of is the area growing and is, you know, kind of the area around it, where is actually the piece of real estate um, and, you know, where the, the real estate is focused can trigger um, different state tax issues. 
um, which is becoming more and more prevalent today, talking from an income tax perspective. Um, if I'm located in Florida and all of my investments are currently in Florida and I invest in some uh, real estate in New York, I'm opening exposure to New York, potentially having to file New York um, regulatory income tax returns, things of that nature. Um, so paying attention to those kind of issues and making sure um, that both you as the individual, because um, again, all of this kind of flows to your individual return and the GP as the fund manager being aware of all of these things uh, and the, the regulatory requirements around it is important. Um, and then the last but lot, not least, and looking at kind of the risk around there, there's more than this list, but for the big ticket items uh, is looking at the actual asset itself and um, tying in all of kind of the the market and location, the actual property itself, the condition it's in, um, looking at is the actual asset itself worth investing in. Uh, the commercial space often uses like a school grading system, right? Like A through D to, um, to uh, quote unquote score investments. And so you're looking at both the class of the asset itself and the location it's in. Um, you wouldn't want to necessarily invest in an A quality, uh, quality property and a D quality location, right? So just making sure that lines up, you're comfortable with how it all, um, uh, how that's all coming, all of the other risk factors are coming together is important in making these decisions. I think Kyle makes several good points here. You know, as CPAs, we often focus a lot more on the tax side and getting into these real estate funds, it absolutely makes your taxes more complicated. Especially if you're an LP and you're investing into a real estate fund and maybe your taxes are more on the simpler side, but by investing in these real estate funds, you don't realize how much more complicated that can make it. Like you were saying with additional states, if you're based investing in funds that are in other states, you probably might have state compliance that you have to now deal with. This makes your tax situation a lot more complicated. You probably need to make sure you have a CPA that is qualified to handle those situation. And then of course the cost of, pre of preparing your tax return, unfortunately is, is another name will probably significantly go up. But just like anything else, when you're investing in these real estate funds, you just need to make sure that the benefits and the risk meet whatever your risk assessment is. So make sure the, the return, the performance in the fund is what you're looking for at the additional cost and the additional time that you have to put in by investing in these. It's very important that you realize that just like stocks perform different, real estate funds perform different. So make sure you're doing your due diligence before investing in funds. And if you're the general partner and you're starting a fund, you know, it's a lot of work. But it's a it's a lot of risk on your side, but it is a lot of reward. If you have a good performing fund, you can make a lot of money off it, and then now you have basically access to start new funds because people have made that trust with you, knowing that you started a good fund, you know what you're doing, and now you can go out and create more funds, and fortunately make even more money. So thanks for watching. Tune in next time where Kyle and I dig a little bit deeper into real estate funds. To learn more about James Moore and Company's real estate accounting and business solutions, go to jmco.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our Real Estate Industry Update series to receive updates when new videos are released. If you'd like to be a guest, or if there's a topic you'd like to see covered on a future episode, contact us through our website or email us at info at jmco.com. You can also follow us on social media for more news as the landscape of real estate continues to rapidly evolve.